Hello everybody, welcome to another lesson in macroeconomics. Today we are looking at aggregate demand. When we say aggregate means added all together. So aggregate, aggregate demand is the total demand for goods and services produced by a nation. Another way to look at it is aggregate demand is the total expenditure on goods and services within a nation. All right, so this is our aggregate demand curve. We have price level on the y-axis and real GDP output on the x-axis. So we can see there is an inverse relationship between the price level and aggregate demand. So we can say there's an inverse relationship between price level and expenditure. Now, who are the key players who demand goods and services within a country or who spend on goods and services within a country? That is the consumers, the citizens of the nation, businesses, government, and foreigners. All right. So expenditure by consumers is consumption. That's represented by the C. Expenditure by businesses is investment. Spending by government is represented by this G here. And spending by foreigners is the net exports. Net exports is when you deduct the imports from the exports. X represents the exports. M represents the imports. All right. So now we're going to look at why our curve is downward sloping. The first reason is the wealth effect, which shows the relationship between price level and purchasing power. Or we can say the relationship between price level and spending. Right, A decrease in the price level of goods and services leads to more spending because as the goods become cheaper, you have more disposable income. More disposable income, you feel wealthier, or a better term, you feel richer, so you can buy more goods and services, all right? Or you can actually, or you can actually buy more quantities of the goods that you like, all right? So let's relate this to our aggregate demand curve all right so at a higher price level of goods and services all right consumers will spend less all right because they do not feel richer all right they do not feel richer wealthier so they'll buy less of the goods and services all right but if the price level of goods and services within a country goes down all right, consumers will have more disposable income and they can buy more quantities of the goods that they like and they can even buy various other goods which they could get, which they couldn't get, all right, when the price level was high. Okay, so this is that relationship here, all right. The second reason why the demand curve is downward sloping is the interest rate effect. We show the relationship between the price level and investment spending by businesses. Let's think of it like this. At higher price levels, all right, people who spend less, as we saw earlier on, and actually people are also going to save less. Let's just take, let's look at this scenario like this. Let's say you have an income of 100 kwacha, right? And only, you only buy two goods and the remainder of your money, you save it. So let's say you buy the two goods that you buy are sugar. And tea. All right. Just these two goods. Okay. Only sugar and tea. But let's say sugar costs 10 kwacha a packet. And a packet of tea also costs 10 kwacha. All right. So we say 100 minus 10 minus 10, basically 100 minus 20, you remain with 80 kwacha for saving. Okay. When you save this money, it goes to the banks. When the banks have more money in, the, in their coffers, they can lend out more at lower interest rates. All right. Just think of it like this. If you only have a hundred kwacha, you only your last hundred kwacha, and someone asks you, "Can I borrow that hundred kwacha?" 
you would either refuse or the interest that you're going to charge him is going to be very high. All right. Now let's look at it on the other side. If you have a one million and someone comes asking for a hand kwacha, obviously the interest that you're going to charge them is going to be very low because you've got a lot of money. That's the same with the banks. If the banks have a lot of money, less interest rates, lower interest rates, businesses can borrow more and they invest more, investment spending, right? Now, back to our example here, this illustration here. Let's say the price level of the sugar and the tea go up. Let's see what will happen to our savings. Right, let's make this very extreme. Let's say the price of sugar becomes 80 kwacha and the price of tea now becomes 15 kwacha. All right. 80 plus 15, that is 95. 100 minus 95, it means 5 kwacha. All right. So mean, meaning you have got a five quarter for saving, all right? And you maybe might not even be inclined to save this money, all right? So less saving by the consumers or businesses, the banks who have less money to loan out. And if the bank has lo less money to loan out, it charges higher interest rates. And at higher interest rates, businesses will borrow less and they'll spend less, all right? So... At high price levels, less spending and less saving, all right? So businesses will spend less, as you can see here, Q1. At lower price levels, more spending, more money in the banks, less interest rates, businesses can invest more. That's being illustrated here in green, in Q2, all right? Then... Final reason why our aggregate demand curve is downward sloping is the exchange rate effect, which shows the relationship between price level and exports. All right. When the price level of Zambian goods goes up, all right, to high price levels, our goods become expensive to the foreigners. When our goods become expensive to the foreigners, they buy less, which is illustrated here. All right. At higher price levels, Foreigners are going to buy less because your goods are expensive and they'll go somewhere else. But if the price level of our goods and services goes down, our goods and services are going to look cheap to foreigners and foreigners are going to spend more on our goods and services. So that's the reason. So those are the three reasons why there's an inverse relationship between price level and aggregate demand because at high price levels, there's going to be less spending by consumers, businesses, even government and uh, foreigners. But at lower price levels, there's going to be more spending by consumers, businesses, and government. Now, let us also talk about the shifters of the aggregate demand curve. Right? Remember our expression here, aggregate demand equals consumer spending, which is consumption, investment, business spending, government spending, and net exports. So any one of these four factors, these are the four factors that shift the aggregate demand curve, all right? Let's say, for example, if there's an increase in consumer spending, right, we're going to have a rightward shift in our aggregate demand curve, all right, which is represented like this which means there's our aggregate demand has increased, right? Demand has increased, the expenditure has increased, right? S the same thing with investment spending. If investment spending increases, aggregate demand shifts to the right. Even government spending, if government spending increases, aggregate demand shifts to the right, right? Even net exports, if we export more, then aggregate demand shifts to the right. So this represents an increase in aggregate demand, which can be translated to an increase in demand for our goods, which is by the country, or an increase in expenditure of the goods and services of the country, right? Then a reduction in either consumption spending by us, the consumers, investment by businesses, 
governments spending reduces or our exports reduce our aggregate demand curve shifts to the left all right this represents a decrease in aggregate demand all right so that's that that's not what you're supposed to know about the aggregate demand curve thank you for paying attention and we'll see you next time